The NFL season is so much closer than I thought. I came home today and I'm seeing players getting cut. I'm like, why the hell are all these players getting cut? What, what's going on? What, is some kind of purge going on or something like that? No, NFL cuts have are due tomorrow, Saturday, September 5th. What? Where'd the time go? You know what? I'm not even going to complain. I'm not going to get mad because this is what we wanted. We want football. And for those of you guys that are NFL fans, this probably isn't the video for you. This is strictly a New York Giants video. We're going to be going over some potential cuts and the final 53-man roster for the New York Giants. Now, I was of the belief throughout this whole offseason that the NFL approved that there was a 55-man roster, but I guess it's not going to be applied this year. So... 53 man roster, we're just gonna stick with that. So I went old school. Instead of using my computer, I went old school and found a notebook and wrote it all down just because it's easier that way and it helps me think. Okay, it helps me think. So we're gonna go over all 53 man, 53 people, 53 players on the New York Giants roster according to my if I was the GM, what would I do? Probably not what I do, more, it's kind of a mixture. What would I would do mixed with my prediction, okay? Just, I don't know how to explain it, all right? So let's, let's get started. All right, everybody. So let's start off with the quarterbacks. Now, I know a lot of people are thinking, are we going to, you know, keep three quarterbacks? Who are we going to keep? Is Alex Tanney going to remain on the roster? Or is Colt McCoy going to take over? Is Cooper Rush, the younger quarterback out of all the other guys, all the other backup quarterbacks, is he going to make the roster? And I'm going to say that is a yes. Cooper Rush is uh, an inex inexperienced but very um, high ceiling back of quarterback if that makes any sense so behind daniel jones because obviously it's going to be daniel jones daniel jones colt mccoy and cooper rush alex tanny and the line there he was the kind of the mentor for daniel jones but i think that mentor role got upgraded with colt mccoy next up we've got the running back position this is pretty much self-explanatory in my opinion i thought javon leak made a really good run at a potential, you know, stolen spot from, you know, Wayne Gallman. Uh, I think Deion Lewis is kind of a lock to make this roster. He's a free agent acquisition and, you know, nobody else really competing at a, at a high, you know, production um, value for, you know, at running back. So I'm going to take Saquon Barkley, Deion Lewis, and Wayne Gallman, and our fullback, who is considered a running back, Eli Penny, will make the roster. So four total running backs, three actual running backs, and one fullback. Next, we've got the wide receivers. Now, this, and especially in the back end, is going to get a little, maybe you guys would get mad, maybe you guys won't, but I, you know, as far as the Ohio State undrafted free agent guys, I'll be completely honest with you, it's underwhelming, right? I loved Austin Mack, I liked Benjamin Victor, I knew he was going to struggle, he's just not aggressive enough, he doesn't really use his height to his advantage, uh, not like a David Sills was doing, but unfortunately he was put on IR, which is not cool, but that's a good thing that he's put on IR, because he's basically still with the team contractually, but he's not holding up a roster spot, so that means if something were to happen later on this year, the Giants are smart enough to take him off at week 10, and see what happens so uh, because i believe this year you could take anybody off uh, any amount of players off of ir uh, due to the pandemic so i don't know how that makes sense but i don't know if that's the actual rule but that's what i heard so uh, don't take my word for it all right but still let's get on to the wide receivers darius slayton sterling shepherd golden tate and Corey coleman are going to be your quadruplets or quad i don't know the quads right uh these are the four guys that i think are definitely going to make this roster even Corey coleman someone that's been injury plagued throughout his career has been making plays in this offseason not compared to last year but you know remember that you know this is a different coaching staff yes but remember that dave gettleman knows you know what Corey coleman did last year in training camp to win that third uh wide receiver spot before he got hurt but Corey Coleman should be a good spot at number four wide receiver. And then after that, it gets a little difficult. I'm going to take Alex Bachman, right? We're going to take Alex Bachman, who's been making plays, catching everything in training camp so far. Uh, David Sills, like I said, unfortunately on IR. And that last spot I'm going to give to Johnny Holton. Johnny Holton is a lot better receiver than you guys think, especially that he might be our, like our last wide receiver, right? Probably Alex Bachman will be the last one. We're talking that Johnny Holton is going to be our fifth guy. He started for the Steelers. He started for the Raiders. All right, he's he's played in the NFL, okay? 
I don't, I don't care how bad an NFL starter is. If that NFL starter is a backup, then I'm all for it all the way. I don't care if Johnny Holton is not a guy we're looking for, like a 6'4 wide receiver. I don't care. He's a guy. He's a body. He, he's he's going to be productive. So I'm, 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 I'm all for it. So that is the wide receivers for you guys. Tight ends. Now, Ryson John has been put on IR. I know that's a big disappointment to everybody, and especially to me too, because I kind of wanted to see what he was able to do, being kind of a, a poor man's Evan Ingram, uh, for lack of a better term. So Evan Ingram, obviously, is going to make this roster. Caden Smith, who has been making plays in this offseason, him, him and Daniel Jones' connection is, you know, picking up right where it left off from last year. I mean, it, it, it's impeccable the connection that they have it might be even better than ingram's connection with daniel jones um so we're gonna take caden smith second and then levine toy lolo who struggled this camp he's actually been very underwhelming this camp but he's an experienced veteran he's a run blocking tight end we need that kind of guy on the team right now and then last but not least we're gonna take garrett dickerson over eric tomlinson um i just think garrett dickerson has been impressing in camp a lot longer he's been with the giants a lot longer he's been fighting to make a spot similar to like a will tie or matt lacoste give that tight end a chance to do something in the regular season after all these camps he's been in next we're going to get on to the offensive line now usually an offensive line is you know keeps around nine or ten guys i'm going to say they keep eight guys just to try to help the defense a little bit because the defense is full of injuries you know we have the injury to david mayo we have the injury to xavier mckinney and we have a lot of guys a lot of young guys uh you know there's more veterans on the offense than there is on the defense so um you know just to give a little help to the defense they're going to keep eight offensive linemen uh this year they usually keep around nine so our starting five is going to go from left to right we're going to say andrew thomas will hernandez nick gates Kevin Zeitler and to start the season I'm gonna say Cam Fleming but keep in mind Matt Parrott is well on his way you guys I listen don't take my word for it. even though I've been praising and you know lifting up uh, Matt Parrott's name for how I don't even know how long since we drafted him even before we drafted him I thought he was gonna be a starter very very soon and it seems like the media critics are thinking that as well the, the sports media guys are watching them practice also think that as well matt parrot will be starting soon so matt parrot's the second the seventh guy um uh, the, the sixth guy i'm sorry um and then we've got shane lemieux and john jalapio so you know spencer pulley is a very interesting situation here you guys know that spencer pulley is on a three-year three million dollar deal i believe it's his second year on that deal but the giants recently signed john jalapio they're not just going to sign the guy to then kick him or cut him about three days later so I imagine John Hall is probably going to take the spot over Spencer Pulley, and it's the end of the line for Spencer Pulley, as Nick Gates is probably going to win the role at center. And then Shane Lemieux is also going to be that guard slash uh, center for the Giants. We then move on to the defense. Now, this is where it gets interesting, a lot more interesting than the offense, because we kind of it's kind of self-explanatory with the offense. A lot of starting roles that are pr pretty much assumed. But here, it gets a little difficult, especially with the injuries involved. So we're going to start off with the interior defensive line. We're going to start off with the first starting three, and that is Leonard Williams, Dalvin Tomlinson, and Dexter Lawrence. Then behind them is BJ Hill, Austin Johnson, and RJ McIntosh. I do like Dalen Mack. I like RJ McIntosh. I think he's a real good sleeper and a guy that's, you know, over is overlooked. So I think he's he's a really good fit uh, for making this roster. Austin, Austin Johnson, I don't really like as much, but he he's a proven run stuffer. He's worked with Sean Spencer in college. I think Sean Spencer will want to try to keep him on the team to try to develop him and try to use him to the best ability because of the fami familiarity with him. We then move on to the edge rushers. And now this I I'm I'm confident in this, but I mean I when I was looking at this, I was like, well, there's not it's pretty self-explanatory, more self-explanatory than I initially thought. Um, so the edge rushers: Marcus Golden, Kyler Fackrell, Lorenzo Carter, O'Shane Zimenez, and Carter Coffin. Those are the five guys I believe the Giants are going to keep on this roster. Um, you know, the other guys to to really choose from is like Cam Brown. Okay, that, that's like pretty much the only edge rusher left. We don't really have a bevy of edge rushers. Pretty much the guys that we have are the guys that are going to make the roster. That's why I thought we should have kept Olawale Pitiku. Shout out to my guy Olawale Pitiku, who's a friend of the show. Um, I thought we should have kept him around for more competition 
even if he winds up not making a team, you know, you never know. Give these guys something to compete with, and it doesn't seem like they have to compete at all. So, you know, their their value might not. I mean, their production might get, not get any better this year because they really haven't had to compete. They really. I mean, how are they going to get cut if they bring in another guy, if they bring in another edge rusher, or they trade for an edge rusher, but pretty much the only guy who's probably going to get cut is our sixth round selection in Cam Brown, so, I mean, whatever. Uh, we then move on to the inside linebacker spot, and let's talk about Blake Martinez. Blake Martinez has really been um, a question mark in this training camp due to some undisclosed injury that nobody wants to get into and everybody it seems like you say a bad word every time you bring up Blake Martinez and injury coach Joe Judge just flips a switch and says oh we're not talking about that so I don't know what's going on there but yeah I, I, st I still believe he's gonna make the team he should be 100% now he was back at practice so that's okay uh, Ryan Connolly is our second guy because David Mayo is gone and I think Ryan Connolly is probably a better starter anyway just let's just hope the guy stays healthy he's missed some practices as well Devonte Downs who's really impressed in the scrimmages that we've seen um, and, and and the very limited but very good plays in uh, in the scrimmages um, he's a guy that's going to make the roster as well. And then last but not least, Tay Crowder over TJ Brunson, um, in my opinion. Listen, this guy's Mr. Irrelevant, yes. I know the Giants drafted two more inside linebackers. Cam Brown, who got turned into an edge rusher, and TJ Brunson. But I think Tay Crowder is a lot better, and the Giants like Tay Crowder. They're giving him a lot more reps, more than the other guys. So, um, and, and, you know, I like Josiah Taufa too. He's a guy that came on a year ago. And I liked his his energy, but he hasn't made anything uh, in in camp so far. I haven't even heard his name at all in camp so far. So um, those are the inside linebackers. We then move on to the cornerbacks, and I love this. I love this. I, I'm actually pretty confident in our cornerbacks, believe it or not. I'm not confident like we're gonna be world beaters, but confident in and I don't think we're gonna be as bad as everybody else says. So first off, we've got James Bradbury. James Bradbury um, is solid, solid, solid uh, cornerback that I think is going to be, he's going to do just fine uh, this year. And then we just traded for Isaac Yadam as well from the Denver Broncos. I've yet to do my film study on him, but he is a, I guess, like an Eli Apple type starter where he does a lot of bad and does some good. He's just not bad enough to bench, but not good enough to really have confidence in. So you know, in the very in-between Isaac Yadam is, is in, and we traded for a seventh-round pick, so I really don't care. He started eight games last year, and they survived. So um, let's just see what happens there. But he is slated to be our second cornerback. And then in the slot, we've got our man, Darnay Holmes. Man, I'm so excited about Darnay Holmes and his rookie year. I hope the best for him. I hope he stays healthy. But he is probably projected to be our best rookie this year, being that Xavier McKinney is going to be out for the majority of the season. Andrew Thomas uh, is starting at a really tough spot at left tackle, one of the toughest spots to start at in the NFL. And, you know, Matt Perry is not, you know, on the field and what have you. So I, Darnay Holmes seems to be the golden boy of this 2020. NFL draft class for the New York Giants. Uh, then we move on to uh, Corey Ballantine, who's going to make this roster, who was supposed to be our starting outside guy until Yadam came in. And then Grant Haley, and then Brandon Williams. I think Brandon Williams has some, some experience, former third round pick, former Arizona Cardinal, um, and I think he could provide some sort of help on this roster, especially probably special teams as well. So I know you guys are like, what, what happened to Julian Love? What happened to Logan Ryan? Well, the, the Giants free safety roles are going to be filled by former cornerbacks in Julian Love and Logan Ryan. I believe Logan Ryan is going to start, then Julian Love is probably going to play the backup role. And I think Julian Love is going to be on the field a lot more than people think. Just because he's the second free safety, I think he's going to be on the field a lot. You guys remember a couple years ago, granted it was with James Betcher's scheme, but it was sometimes it was Landon Collins, Curtis Riley, and Michael Thomas on the field, three safeties on the field, the big nickel, okay, they're, they're gonna mix that up, of course, so, and Logan Ryan wants to be a safety, so, um, imagine the, those two guys being on the field more often than you guys think, and the strong safety role is gonna be filled by Jabril Peppers and Nate Ebner. I like Sean Ch Chandler, but Nate Ebner provides too much in the special teams game to really let go of, and Sean Chandler is just not that good. I like Sean Chandler. I think he's, he's a developmental safety. He's just not that good. So, and then our special teams guys, we've got Graham Gano, 
who has been excellent, excellent. I mean, Pro Bowl status so far. Let's keep our fingers crossed that no injuries happen and no inconsistencies happen. But Graham Gano has been pretty solid so far. Riley Dixon, who is arguably a Pro Bowl punter, one of the best punters in the NFL, who's had such a productive season last year. And then, um, I believe he made the Pro Bowl last year. I think Riley Dixon made the Pro Bowl last year. Um, and our long snapper, Casey Crater, who has provided a, a great um, production last year in a very limited role he played uh, coming in mid-season, but he, he played phenomenally and helped Alger Grosshaus a lot towards the end of the season. So, that is my 50 three man roster i hope i got the math right because you guys know i don't do the math very well i don't do the math that's why i'm the football analyst okay i know that a lot of math is involved with that but i'm a football guy not a math guy so uh hopefully that was 53 guys let me know your thoughts in the comment section below if you guys really want to go ahead and drop your 53 man roster prediction below i'd like to take a look at it and or just give me some dark horses give me some guys you guys think are going to be cut that may you know surprise some people what have you doesn't matter i want to see it all in the comment section below flood that comment section hit that like button subscribe if you guys are new especially if you're a giants fan what are you doing i cover the new york giants i write articles on the giants check out ftfn link is in the description okay and that being said i'll see you guys tomorrow for the final 53 man roster Woo!